What we have been told, that there was a Nankai massacre, is a lie based on my own experience. China is telling an outright lie. It's a lie for political propaganda. The Nanking incident never happened. Our program, The Pact, has been working hard to uncover the facts behind history. What is the Nanking Incident or the Nanking Massacre? On December 13, 1937, the Japanese Imperial Army entered the city center of Nanking, the former capital of China. The Nanking Incident is reported as an event in which the Japanese military killed 300,000 Chinese civilians and prisoners of war and went on a rampage of raping, looting, and burning during a six-week period following the Japanese capture of Nanking. Did a mass killing of Chinese people really occur? Mr. Kenichi Ara, a researcher of modern contemporary history. At the time, Japanese military went into Nanking. 200,000 to 250,000 people lived there. When the Japanese Imperial Army entered the city center of Nanking on December 13, Chinese soldiers who were not wearing uniforms hid in the safety zone to which civilians had been evacuated. This meant public security could not be maintained. On December 24, the Japanese military separated civilians from soldiers. At that time, there were 200,000 to 250,000 people who were recognized as civilians. This means that the population of Nanking before and after the Japanese took control of the city did not change at all. Therefore, a mass massacre of civilians could never have occurred. The rape of 20,000 women was based on a telegram sent to the German embassy in Shanghai by John Rabe, a German, in January 1937, which reported 20,000 women were raped. However, Rabe's diary was published in 1996. According to the diary, he witnessed only one or two rapes during the period following the Japanese capture of Nanking in December and January. In other words, the content of his telegram was based on rumor. These are videos and photographs taken in Nanking during the period in which the massacre is said to have occurred. It was very calm and peaceful in the city of Nanking. Therefore, a so-called massacre could never have happened, no matter how you look at the situation in the city. It would be pointless to kill local people. What is the benefit of killing people? They had to occupy and rule Nanking. If they had killed local people, it would have just provoked antipathy. The former soldier who was in Nanking at the time testified that local people were going about their business as usual immediately after the Japanese army marched into Nanking. In the walled city of Nanking, I saw several street stalls doing business with Japanese soldiers. He is saying that he bought an ivory seal at a street stall. This is the seal I bought in Nanking. I still have it to this day. It would be utterly incredulous for business to be conducted peacefully on the one hand if so many people were being massacred every day on the other hand. Nanking residents provided us with lunch, although China claims that 250,000 to 300,000 people were massacred. This is an utter lie. If such a mass murder had occurred, people would never have served us lunch. They say that we rounded people up and killed them. If we tried to pacify people on the one hand and killed them on the other hand, we would have been hated by the locals. When I was in Dalian, near the area in question, in December 1937, the feeling I got was there had been no mass killing. When the Japanese troops entered the city of Nanking, the people in the walled city 
estimated to be less than 200,000, welcome them with waving flags. I feel based on first-hand experience that the story of as many as 300,000 people being killed was fabricated. I never heard of such an incident. If the Nanking massacre was a fact, naturally I would have heard about it, because I had friendly relations with many Chinese. When I was a student, I saw no description of the Nanking massacre in our history textbooks. The Chinese Communist Party had taught since long before I was a student that the Chinese Nationalist Party, led by Chiang Kai-shek, had killed 300,000 Chinese people. Chinese textbooks up to 1979 never said anything about 300,000 people being massacred in Nanking. There was no description of the massacre in any publication of the Communist Party. When your grandfather visited Japan in 1997, he was surprised to hear about the Yankee Massacre and said that was done by the Nationalist Party. What was the change to be done by the Japanese army? Photograph of corpses along the Yangiz River, which was said to be one of the photographs of the Nanking Massacre. They are not the bodies of those killed by Japanese soldiers. The corpses were of those civilians who were dashing to be the first to get on a ship and who were shot by soldiers of China, the Chinese Nationalist Party who themselves wanted to flee by ship. The massacre was committed by the Chinese Nationalist Party. After they killed those civilians, Japanese troops arrived and the blame was laid on the Japanese Imperial Army. But that is not true. My grandfather said that the Nationalist Party was responsible for the Nanking Massacre. I would like to ask you a question. Can you say with insurance that the Nanking Massacre is a lie? The Nanking Massacre was a lie fabricated by the Chinese Nationalist Party. Now the Chinese Communist Party is using this line and spreading it around the world. This incident was reported on the 15th two days after Japanese troops entered Nanking in the Chicago Daily News and on the 18th in the New York Times. Wholesale slaughter and barbarism turns Nanking into a city of fear. Nanking's streets littered with dead civilians and discarded equipment and uniforms of Chinese soldiers. In August 1938, H.J. Timperley, the Manchester Guardian's China correspondent, published the book What War Means. He told the world of scenes of horror in Nanking. The Nanking incident became known to the world as a fact that actually occurred through these reports and books. However, all isn't as it seems. The name of this person, Timperley, is written as Den Hakuretsu in Chinese. Timperley, the author of What War Means, was not an independent observer, a third party, but was an advisor to the Central Propaganda Bureau of the Chinese Nationalist Party. Timperley was an ideal selection. Director of the International Propaganda Division of the Central Propaganda Bureau of the Chinese Nationalist Party. In his autobiography, Zen Zubao writes, We paid money and asked Timperly and Smythe via Timperly to write books purporting to give eyewitness records of the Nanking Massacre by Japanese troops. And we succeeded in having them published. You can see Den Hakuretsu, can't you? They were maneuvering behind the scenes. They were asked to write. How they did it by involving European and American journalists and how they did it by forming a network is written in detail. Similarly, China exerted an influence on articles about the Nanking incident appearing in the Chicago Daily News and the New York Times. In fact, the reports were not based on actual events that the reporters had witnessed firsthand but were based on notes handed out by Minor Bates, who was a professor at the University of Nanking and an influential member of the International Committee for the Nanking Safety Zone. Actually, Bates was not an independent third party, 
but was an advisor to the government of the Chinese Nationalist Party, and he was involved in Chinese propaganda operations. This is a way of conducting propaganda operations by making an organization work for you. It was done because the government of the Nationalist Party wanted to involve the Americans. They knew they could not beat Japan if they went to war with Japan. They appealed to public opinion in the United States and the world to cause them to interfere between China and Japan. As the Chinese were trying hard to make their voices heard, they felt it was not an outright lie and got involved and they were deceived. China tells an outright lie, a lie for the country, a lie for political purposes. What is the benefit of talking about the Nanking Massacre by the Japanese army? Nothing other than that they want to say nasty things about Japan. You mean they don't have other weapons to attack Japan? None. So they are accusing Japan of the Nanking Massacre and the Kafir Woman issue of 70 years ago. They have no tools other than these with else which to break. Nanking Massacre. A work of fabrication. Now China just changed their strategy. Chinese leaders talk about how brutal Japanese troops used to be to keep Japan weak and the war criminal state by taking up Nanking incident again. This is China's new strategy. And we will examine this issue and reveal what really happened in history. ジャンキン大虐殺の話あるけど、私ダンコ見てもないからね。絶対なことはなかったから、その日本のね、軍人のね、陸軍海軍の人たちのね、そのモラルの高さはね、世界最高水準だったんだからね。これについてはね、私